To be crowned the national champion is an enormous achievement. I can't actually believe it, I'm really excited. It also comes with immense responsibility, as it's not just about the gold medal, it's about the jersey, the coveted green and gold. Wearing the green and gold is a dream come true. A jersey to be worn all season long on the international stage, always seen as a symbol of what Australian cycling stands for. She is going to win the Australian Rovers Championship. The wearers of the jersey are among the greats of the sport. That's a tremendous ride by her. Olympic champion Kathy Watts, Commonwealth Games gold medalist Katrin Garfoot, World Cup winners Anoni Wood and Anna Wilson. Amanda Spratt has won it twice, so too has Gracie Olven. And last year, local hero Shannon Molsey upstaged the favourites to collect the biggest win of her career. It's a dream. It's an absolute dream. Who will take the green and gold jersey and be crowned Australian road champion in 2019? Welcome to Bananyong for the 2019 Fair Uni Road National Championships, where the scene is set in the battle for the green and gold jersey. I'm Matthew Keenan, joined by Australian time trial champion Bridie O'Donnell and dual Australian road champion Robbie McEwen. Bridie, the atmosphere before the start is one of great anticipation. It's so exciting to prepare for this race over the Christmas break and for so many of these riders they'll be really nervous but they're really keen to get moving. Robbie, the significant element of this race, the National Championships, is the fact that the evidence is there for the rest of the year wearing the green and gold jersey around the globe. Yeah, and you talk about the significance of that green and gold jersey. What every rider who's lining up here wants to do is get that jersey, pack it in the suitcase and take it to Europe to put it on show in the biggest races in the world. And I'll tell you what, it gains some attention overseas. Which you famously did at the Tour de France, winning 12 stages, often going across the finish line, letting everybody know he was the Aussie champion. There's already been a few gold medals decided and those green and gold jerseys collected in the opening couple of days here. It kicked off in Sturt Street Valley with the criteriums. In the under 23 race, we saw two riders lap the field, and Jared Drisner's managed to hold off the world record holder from the team's pursuit, Cal O'Brien. Well, what better man to have out, you, out there with you than O'Brien, but lapping the field, what a performance. Perfect sort of circuit with it, with those two hairpin corners, but uh, massive performance to lap the field. In the women's race, Bridie, Rebecca Wyzak, back to back. She was so impressive in that final corner. You could see she went round the corner in first and just attacked. There was some great footage of a rear camera from her. There was daylight behind her. Sarah Roy it was in second. Matilda Reynolds was in third. In the under 23 women's race, it was Ruby Roseman Gannon who collected the gold medal there. She also went across the line in third place outright. In the men's events, it was Brenton Jones finally getting the win. Well, talk about perseverance, but not just perseverance, talent and a whole lot of power. And you could just tell that last 50 metres, all those bronze and silver medals just running through his mind. No, not again. This time it's mine. And he got it. Three bronze medals, a silver medal, and now a gold medal for Brenton Jones. It was Tristan Ward in second, followed then by Jay McCarthy in third place. The under 23 road race yesterday, it was the local hero, Nicholas White, who won ahead of Michael Potter and Sam Jenner. Yeah, what a special moment. Not just a national championship, but in his hometown. There was a lot of local noise, that's for sure, and some chewed fingernails by his mum, no doubt. His mum was standing directly across from the finish line as we were awaiting the arrival of that race, and she was anxious. The jubilation at the end, you could just about feel it. In terms of the course, it is the traditional course up Mount Buninyong. For the women, 104 kilometres, but after the climb of Mount Buninyong, they go through Fair Juni, and this is a technical part of the course. Yeah, so this is a new addition over the last couple of years, so going through Fed Uni, and this adds that extra element where they used to come over the top of the climb, straight down the descent, made it quite hard for breakaways. With the addition of this technical section through Fed Uni, it's actually a chance for any break to extend their lead. Bridie, it's a long list of contenders, plenty of elevation to be gained throughout the race, but the defending champion Shannon Molsey, she's got a strong teammate with her, Brody Chapman. We saw Brody have an extraordinary race last year to win the Herald Sun Tour, and she's really motivated before this race. Certainly a strong team, of course, though, from Mitchelton Scott, with both Gracie and Amanda have t four wins between the two of them. Peter Mullins is also a former winner. Shara Gillow's won the time trial. Chloe Hosking doesn't like the course, but she wants it. Emily Roper is most certainly a dark horse. In terms of the under-23s, Sarah Gigante steps up from the under-19s. Emma Chilton is a big contender, and Nicola McDonald will be one to watch as well. Amongst the favourites, the defending champion Shannon Molseed, she's down with Sophie Smith. 
Oh, I feel pretty excited, nervous. Um, I'm glad that it's finally here. There's been so much hype around today and um, the sun's out. It's a bit chilly this morning, but yeah, just really looking forward to getting the race underway and taking it lap by lap and just um, trying to repeat last year. But I've also got Brody Chapman alongside me racing for Team Tubeco Silicon Valley Bank. So um, just really want to bring that jersey home to the team again. Mitchell and Scott have uh, power in numbers. Does that make a difference on a course like this or is it really a race of attrition? Uh, a bit of both. It's definitely a race of attrition, but we also want to use our numbers and make it a hard race. That will suit us. But, I mean, you know, it doesn't always go your way. We've seen that a couple of times in the, in the last few years with Shannon Mousey obviously getting the win and Peter Mullins as well. So we don't get it all our own way and we'll definitely have to fight for it. Rachel Nayland, what are the complexities of being a one-woman team in this race? <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. Um, national Championships is always an interesting race, um, obviously, when you have a, a team like Mitchelton, who's so strong. Um, but, yeah, like, I think the depth of Australian women's cycling is really, uh, really strong at the moment, so there'll be a lot of outliers and a lot of people giving it a crack today, so I think it's gonna, we can expect a really hard race. Yeah, this is my 13th time here, which I think means I've done 120-something race laps of the circuit. Uh, we've got a, a small team of four today, um, but an excited team of four. So I kind of always get excited about Bunning Young, even though I don't like climbing, and uh, looking forward to backing Sarah Gigante for a podium in under 23 today. Good. Well, for Peter Mullins, it's off to a good start. It was the red coats that got them going, and she's spoken already about Sarah Gigante as a contender for the under-23 title. The race getting underway with a rapid first lap, Bridie O'Donnell, and amongst them, here she is, number 38, Sarah Gigante. She is in the early breakaway. This breakaway is very powerful. We've got two women from the specialised team, Ella Bloor and Taryn Heather, but a very strong representation. In fact, the only team who has missed out is the Gusto Step Forward KOM, powered by Suzuki team. So off the rise in the breakaway, Sarah Sarah Roy is there for the Mitchelton Scott team. She's a former winner of the Criterium title. The fluoro colours that you see, number 49, that's Chloe Hosking, reigning Commonwealth Games gold medalist in the road race. The white colours, that's Michaela Parsons. She's been picking up the points in the battle for the stages Queen of the Mountains classification. Sarah Gigante, we mentioned. Ella Bloor and Taryn Heather, both riding for the Specialised Women's Racing Team. And Shara Gillow. This was a fall just a little bit earlier on. And that was Jennifer Darmody that went down. Fingers crossed that she's okay. But Robbie, seeing such a strong group go off the front so early, I think it speaks volumes of the nervousness in the race about the strength of the Mitchelton Scott team. It does, but they've put Sarah Roy in the break, which is great to have someone up there. But Roy, we saw in the Criterium, she was amongst the medals. She's a sprinter, not perfectly suited to this course, and she's out there with some really handy climbers. It's not the ideal situation for Mitchelton Scott, and they're going to have to act. And as we come to live pictures, also following social feeds, I'm hearing that Mitchelton Scott are starting to do something about the situation. In this breakaway group, Sarah Roy, you would normally back her in a sprint finish from this group, with the exception of number 49, Chloe Hosking. Chloe Hosking would be the favourite in a sprint finish from this group. Neither Roy nor Hosking great climbers. This is a fantastic move by Chloe Hosking. It's really smart, and we know she can climb when she's motivated. She won the Cadellavans Road Race, which has got some really big bumps in it. Um, but also we've seen Roy be Mitchelton Scott or Australia's key breakaway rider. We saw it in Norway at the World Championships and again last year in Innsbruck. So she's one of those calm riders that can be there as a presence. But I think you're right, none of these riders are going to feel threatened by her climbing ability. Robbie, the rider in fourth position, number 10 in the blue and white colours, that is Shara Gillow. She's a four-time Australian time trial champion. But we just saw her through that left-hand corner then. She conceded two or three lengths through the corner and there's a succession of those through the Federation Uni. That will cost her a little bit of energy each lap. Won't seem like much the first time nor the second time, but come the eighth and the ninth, it counts. May start to sting a little bit, but when we're talking about the types of riders in the break and we look at sprinters like Hosking and like Roy, we'll talk about climbers Shara Gillow, you would think under normal circumstances on a hilly course, she would ride away from the rest of these girls with one leg, but We've heard this morning that she's actually ill. So it's already a massive performance to get in the break the way she is feeling. Maybe she's 
starting to come good and, and feel a way through and you know, hopefully it was just about a nerves before the race it was making her feel not well. The other rider I'm really keen to look at the performance of today is Minnie Parsons, um, number 77. She's there just in a plain pair of black bibs and a white jersey. She's run, won Australian National Road Series races in Adelaide before, an incredible climber, very small, former runner and has had a bit of a break from cycling but her partner's also a brilliant rider. He rides, uh, won the National Road Series for 2018, Raf Reinstein. So those two train together and uh, she's definitely one to watch. There is Shara Gillow in the white and blue colours, riding for the French FDJ team. She's been with that squad for the past few seasons. She is a really good climber, brilliant time trialist. She's been top ten at World Championships, Australian champion four times. But for her to win, she's not explosive, Robbie. She'd be the first to concede that. She needs to really go on the front foot, be super aggressive. You've spoken about the fact that she is ill. We've heard reports of her having gastro. Great attitude getting in the break. And now, whatever the situation, however she's feeling, she'll be getting a sniff of winning this national title because coming up with just four laps to go, with a lead hovering around three minutes and 20 seconds, she knows she's a real chance, but she'll need to go on the attack because the chase is really going to come from behind. And we've heard Mitchelton Scott are starting to light things up in the peloton. So now you can see Grace Brown, who was third in the road race last year, an incredible time trialer and signed with Mitchelton Scott this year. She's moved from the peloton and is trying to bridge across to this break to join her teammate, Sarah Roy. Last year, she rode with the Gusto team. She dominated the National Road Series. She had some big performances internationally as well, which caught the attention of Mitchelton Scott, not the least that bronze medal in the National Championships 12 months ago. This is a big responsibility to be the one that's sent out on her own, Robbie. Well, rather than ride across to the break, because it's a big gap, still over three minutes, maybe it's a case of Mitchelton Scott just getting the race going, getting a rider off the front, and it provides a springboard. Others are going to react, the pace of the race picks up, then later on, we'll see the likes of Amanda Spratt, who I would think you couldn't go past to win this race. But they're really gambling with letting this group be out this far with riders like Gillow in it. Here are the leaders. They now come in with one kilometre to go before they head through the start-finish line once again in Buninyong. Bridie, seeing Grace Brown be the one to attack from that peloton, what's that tell us about where she sits in the team pecking order? great question. It says that she's not the rider that they want to win or that they think can win. Now they've obviously got great firepower and Lucy Kennedy, Amanda Spratt, Gracie Helvin and Jess Allen still able to be uh, you know, an extra weapon for Mitchelton Scott. But I agree with Robbie that whether or not this is actually trying to agitate the rest of the peloton and yet no one from Gusto team, that's the team with eight riders and, and particularly great rider there Justine Barrow, haven't joined her. Shara Gillow just stretching her back. We had heard the reports about Lauren Kitchen having gastro this morning. We've had an update from Brad McGee, who is the national team manager, also former world champion Olympic Games gold medalist himself, and he has said Shara is fine. That makes this breakaway even more dangerous. It certainly does, and I think what we've seen, particularly with the wind conditions, a slight headwind coming into the fi this finish, which means a slight tailwind at the top of the climb, that's good for riders like Chloe Hosking, who aren't necessarily the lightest, fastest climbers, but we know her amazing explosive ability. We've seen her in echelons in really difficult crosswinds, so she knows how to bridge across, and the climb isn't enough damage that she'll be dropped in these next three or four laps for the break. Number 38, one of the riders eligible for the under 23 classification, that is Sarah Gigante. And she had a 2018 that will make your eyes water. In the Australian Championships, she won all three gold medals at the Road National Championships here in Buninyong and Ballarat. She went to the National Championships on the track, she won three gold medals there. She then broke both arms in May. She didn't let that slow her down at all. She went to the Junior World Championships and she won a silver medal. And just to top it off, Year 12, it's a reasonably large year for any kid. She's got the perfect score, 99.95. Hang on, I thought you said perfect. <laughs> there is. is no 100, <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> it's the only a guy that didn't get the perfect score would know this. <laughs> That is extraordinary, isn't it? Great result. We had a good chat with her dad, actually, just before the start. Um, he's incredibly proud of her, and we've seen, like so many junior athletes, that so many of their performances are dependent on the support of parents. Um, another great example of that was yesterday's winner in the crit, Brenton Jones, his mum, Karen Jones, and their whole family are so supportive of those young men's careers. So it's, it can't be done without the Mum and Dad Institute of Sport, that's for sure. That is correct. Oh, that is uh, an absolute uh, M&D racing of... Uh, 
brought everybody through to a certain stage until they get uh, picked up, show the talent. But uh, talking about intelligence, uh, Sarah Gigante is riding an intelligent race, not trying to do too much, just doing enough to contribute, keep things rolling and hang in with these riders on the climb. It'll be interesting to see when the attacks do start to come from this group, when they get the sniff of the finish. Still 45 kilometres to go, but next time round, just three laps to go. And the better climbers in this group will be thinking, I've got to get rid of Chloe Hosking and Sarah Roy. Speaking of Chloe Brighty, tactically, she's the rider who is on the front. That's smart for a non-climber to be right in the front and dictating terms. So when I've been in this race, you know, I've done this race 10 years in a row, and one of the things you have to do when you're not a great climber or when you're just more of a diesel is to sit on the front and dictate the pace. Part of that is just psychological. You want to feel like you are in control. And also then when Minnie goes for the move to get more KOM points, which she will in another sort of seven or 800 metres, you're, you're monitoring that. So it's, it is very smart, but you can see Chloe is breathing a little harder than Ella Bloor, the specialised rider on her left. And interesting to see Chloe Hosking slot back into second wheel because as a sprinter, normally you would start the climb on the front, do a bit of a turn, set the pace, one comfortable for yourself, and then drift back the entire line and then slot in in last wheel. So you've effectively climbed the hill that 10 or 11 seconds slower than the rest of the bunch. That is energy saving. As we see here, Grace Brown from Mitchelton Scott. She's uh, on the chase between groups. No one coming out to join her just yet. And what we didn't see, but we've heard via the social media and, and reports from the top of the climb, is the last time round, Mitchelton Scott really lit things up. And that's why Grace Brown went out ahead. They said, let's keep this going, keep things split up, keep the pace on now. But the rest of the field have been reluctant to join her and, and really keep it rolling. There's still four laps to go. The gap is three minutes and 20 seconds. We saw on the under 23 men's race yesterday, the gap was out at a similar sort of distance. In fact, it was more. It was out at three minutes and 45 seconds. And in the space of a lap and a half, one serious chase from the committed team out of the Sunshine Coast cut the gap in half. You just point out Bridie in third position, the Criterium champion, Rebecca Wyzak. It's really good to see when riders like this are just giving themselves every opportunity. She knows that she may not get around if the pace changes on a climb, but never discount a rider like Wyzak. But just behind her was Brody Chapman, winner of the Herald Sun Tour last year and teammate of last year's winner, Shannon Malseed. And right on her wheel, Amanda Spratt. Well, now we're seeing that gap to the peloton. Four minutes, 14 seconds behind the lead with four laps to go. The math is easy, a minute per lap, and that's that's feasible at this point with the likes of Amanda Spratt still in the bunch. And it'll be interesting to see how Mitchelton Scott take on the climb this time because now Grace Brown, she's found herself in no woman's land. Here's the next move. They get to the base of the climb, and it's the Mitchelton Scott team. Jess Allen. Who are really increasing the tempo. This is the former Junior World Time Trial champion turning that capability to good use. She will go full gas up through the main strip past the feed zone, I'm sure, until they make the left-hand turn. And this is exactly what the good climbers in the bunch need. They can't wait until that final steep section and say, this is where I'll go because it's a proper steep climb. You've got to get everybody on their limit on this early part of the climb. Really use it. It's not steep, but it can really hurt some legs. Then the gaps will open right up on that steep section at the top. The other rider who will really benefit from this is Jamie Gunning. She rides for the Specialised team and her two teammates, Taryn Heather and Ella Bloor, are up in the break. We saw Jamie have an most amazing Shimano Super Crit at St Kilda Cycling Club just a few weeks ago. Rode away from a very fast moving peloton and then dropped Emily Roper in a sprint to take the win. And no one had heard of her. She's a young woman, very small, light climber. So she'll be in a great position to take advantage of this chase. This is Shara Gillow controlling her own tempo out in front. Parsons it is that rolls over in the white colours. At the back it's still Sarah Gigante. The first of the riders from Mitchelton Scott sitting in third position, that is Sarah Roy. Just behind her is the Commonwealth Games road champion, Chloe Hosking. And the hay bales are out here in Bunningill. Well, the field art, a, a nod to what we see in the Tour de France every year. And uh, this one made by a local hay farmer slash hay bale artist. Name escaping me just at the moment, but he's, uh, he's done a great job with that piece of field art. And hopefully in years to come, we see more and more. And tomorrow, I'm sure we're going to see plenty of costumes and dress-ups and all sorts of things among the fans on the Mountain Bunning Yong. 
No, Matt, uh, this afternoon, I mean, sorry, not tomorrow. You talked about the role of a rider like Jess Allen. You know, as you say, she's there to be disposed of and to do that work. Uh, we saw her riding like that in the Criterium. This is actually her teammate, Grace Brown, in that really tricky intermediate zone. You know, she's made up about 45 seconds on the peloton and, and made herself a little closer to the break, but it's not going to be enough over that time. She'll just be there probably to support Kennedy and Spratt when they get there. And she is spending a lot of energy, and I wouldn't be surprised that by the time she gets to the top of Mount Buninyong, she'll be caught by the peloton. Here are our leaders approaching the final last little kick. They saved the best till last. The final 500 metres are the steepest on this climb. It takes from the finish line to the top of the climb, Roughly seven minutes for the women each lap to cover that part of the course, and it's all pretty much uphill. It's a long time climbing. Well, you can see the gradient there as it kicks up in front of this group. And just a moment ago, we saw them spread right across the road, so nobody really willing to push the pace, and everybody looking at the rest. And most of the riders in this group won't be all too interested in the KOM points, but more deciding how are they going to do this. They'll be hearing what's going on behind them now in the peloton, that big acceleration. It's important for this group just to keep this tempo, keep it even, because that will hurt everybody back in the peloton. Those big accelerations, they will pay for that later on. The dark blue colours, Taryn Heather, she's setting the tempo. In white is Parsons, who has been accumulating all the points in the battle for the stages QOM classification. She collects more points here, number 77, and she is keen to get a spot on the podium for at least one of the prizes up for grabs. This will be a great result for her. She's making her way back into elite racing after a bit of time off. Um, has had an amazing injury as a young woman and, and surgical management of scoliosis. Well, one rider at the back of the route being dropped and this is Ella Bloor who's just been distanced at the top of the climb. And certainly not looking like she wants to make an effort to chase back on so she'll get consumed by firstly Grace Brown who's the chaser and then by the peloton. She really did blow up as she went across the top of the climb. Gigante still holding on at the back. First year up from the under 19s for Sarah Gigante racing in amongst the elites. In the men's, they have a transition with the under-23s before the elites. It's brutal for the women. This is Grace Brown now. She's about to be caught. It's still Jessica Allen. They have made the left-hand turn. They're now onto the main part of Mount Buninyong. Leading the peloton, it is Brody Chapman who is doing the chasing. You can see the all-black colours. That's Emily Roper. And behind her is the big pre-race favourite, Amanda Spratz. This race is blowing apart with still more than 40 kilometres to go. Well, mate, you just mentioned Emily Roper. That is a rider from the Gold Coast. I really expected her to be able to go with the favourites at this point in the race. She's of course a partner with um, Troy Herfoss, who was a man who led the men's race last year most of the day. Mechanical problem for Brody Chapman. She is stopped on the uh, left-hand side of the screen, the right-hand side of the road. Drop the chain. There's no good time to do it, but it can't get much worse than that. The chase for that next group, though, the dark blue colours, that is a former world championship silver medalist chasing. That is Rachel Nalen. Now we're seeing Lucy Kennedy bridging across to Grace Brown. Mitchelton Scott really shaking this race to its foundations. Interestingly, though, they still have four more laps after this climb, four more times up the climb and over 40k to go. So they're certainly trying to do some damage and really improve their chances. You can see that specialised rider there on the left on our screen of Emily Roper is Jamie Gunning, the rider I talked about a little earlier. So she has one teammate still up the road in Taron Heather. And she looks comfortable. Very impressive. Brody Chapman going again and sprinting, trying to get back in contact. You can see Loretta Hansen, white helmet, white sleeves, a trick set at Segafredo. She's moved to a new team this year. Very well known for her sprinting, but still trying to hang in. Well, here at the front, Emily Roper's closed the gap across to Kennedy, brought Amanda Spratt with her, and a very handy group forming as they hit the steepest and final part of this climb. Perfect moment for Mitchell and Scott. They've got to push on with this, and anybody else that's there from other teams potentially can get a free ride across. It is crunch time. One of the riders under serious pressure is the defending champion, Shannon Molseed, but Robbie, a Gold Coaster in black, Emily Roper. Well, she is taking the bit between her teeth. She's not going to wait for Mitchell and Scott to do everything. She knows the situation she's in, so it's worth pushing on across the top, open up this gap, then have a look around and start to save some energy if they can open the gap up. 
The leaders, their advantage, it's now down to two minutes and 42 seconds. This race has moved into its next phase. Probably the biggest attraction we have here at the Wildlife Park is our five metre super crop crunch. We have a tree kangaroo, she's part of a globally managed species. We also have Victoria's only Komodo dragon, so that's really exciting for people to see. Probably my favourite part of the job is just seeing the excitement on visitors' faces, you know, when they come in and they can just touch these animals and it's just a nice, relaxed setting. That's probably the most, you know, enjoyable part. Well, it's not a particularly relaxed setting at the moment around Mount Buninyong. The race has moved into the next phase. It's the elite women's road race. The under-23 title is also up for grabs. Breakaway group, they're in through Federation Uni. A strong chasing group coming behind them, including pre-race favourites... Lucy Kennedy, Amanda Spratt, both from Mitchelton Scott, along with their teammate Grace Brown. And the dark horse is not so dark anymore, Emily Roper. She is amongst the chasers. So too, Jamie Gunning, who has been one of the stars of the last couple of months, Bridie, and is going up a level every time she pins a number on. Well, we saw that Specialised Women's Racing won the National Road Series Best Team last year, and Kate Perry has had some great results in the past, uh, done very well at the time trial last year, and I'm sure we'll be focusing on that in 48 hours' time. But Jamie there at the back of the bunch, a small young rider similar to Roper, uh, benefiting her, and 53 of those two advantaged by the Mitchelton break. Well, here is that chase group, and sitting on the back, one of the specialised riders with two teammates up the road. That's Jamie Gunning. The other four, three from Mitchelton Scott. Is that Kennedy, Spratt and Brown, and in the black is Emily Roper, who really made a great impression forcing things on the climb, and that gap opening for Kennedy at the back, struggling in the corners. What? was noticeable was the distance lost by Kennedy through the corner and the smoothness of number 53 Roper through the corners. The You've benefit of riding criteriums and just confidence. And also she's, she's been a very good bike rider throughout the junior category but how helpful would it be as we see Brody Chapman making it across so too Rachel Nayland so the race is moving again into its next phase. Plenty more getting in amongst them. Elizabeth Stannard is there. So too making contact, that's Jessica Pratt. Gracie Elvin, who's won this title twice. And number 72, that is Bree Wilson. This is a strong group. Rebecca Wyzak, number 60, the winner of the Criterium. Justine Barrow, number 16, has also joined the group. But the cornering of Emily Roper was what I was trying to get to. How much does she learn from her boyfriend, Troy Herfoss, who is the Australian Superbike champion on motorbikes? She goes out to every round of the Superbikes and I'm sure she's picked up a little bit from that, but also trains with Troy on the road bikes. And she's a very handy rider in a tight situation. She races with the guys on the Gold Coast in the club racing and uh, really can more than hold her own. So for so many of these women, particularly women who are really good climbers, they often train with men, and that means that they're getting that benefit of people who are generally a slightly heavier than them and who may have different or, or may greater risk appetite for cornering. So that can be a really good advantage for learning those skills, and someone like Barrow is like that as well, who rides for Team Holden Gusto. Robbie, the breakaway now. They're continuing to work well together. Shara Gillow leading them through. What's going through their minds with the news of the chase coming? Well, I'm sensing a bit more intensity in this group. The way they're working together, I actually went roadside a little bit earlier, had a look at them come past, and it was all hands on top of the handlebars, quite relaxed, cruising, if you like. Now, the body language in that group is a lot different. Down in the drops for the, the one on the front, really pushing a lot harder because they are now fully aware of what's happening behind them. And at the back of the group, Sarah Roy, I'll be surprised if she comes through and does any more work at all. Well, also we can see Bloor has actually made contact again, who'd been dropped from this break. So Taryn Heather's teammate is back in the group of seven. I didn't expect her to return to this group with how she came to a grinding halt at the top of the climb. So she's descended really well to come across to them. Two minutes and 46, the advantage for the leading group. Sitting at the back is Sarah Roy because she has plenty of teammates in amongst the chasing group and she's under clear instructions not to work with the breakaway anymore. Well, that chase is now comprised of not just Grace Brown, who was out there on her own, but along with Spratt and Kennedy and quite a, a number of riders who have come back. They've come from 4 minutes 15 last time across the line. They've taken a minute and a half in the last 7 kilometres. It's gone very quickly. 
So for Chloe Hosking, who sits in second last position in this group, she's made it pretty clear she doesn't like the course. She doesn't like Mount Buninyong. She will like the section through Federation Uni. Knowing such strong climbers are coming, and they are likely to be caught, she needs to ride really conservatively at this point. She does. She has to undergo the race, if you like. She has to just see what the others do and just try and hang in there, be as conservative as possible. But keep contributing to this group. Keep it rolling over, because if she tries to be too cute, things will just not flow at the front anymore and she'll ruin it for herself. So she's got to keep it rolling, do the minimum and try and be conservative on the climb. And there she is, flicking the elbow, letting the rider behind her know, Ella Bloor, that it's your turn to come through. The white colours, that is Parsons. She's been collecting the points in the race for the stages Queen of the Mountains jersey and doing it convincingly. Number seven, Sarah Royd. She sits at the back. She's got responsibilities behind. For a rider like Gigante, she's in an interesting position. She's the only under-23 rider in this group um, and so is obviously wanting to win that jersey. But she also has a teammate in Peter Mullins of her Rock Salt Attacker team who's won before and is motivated to win again. And Sarah Gigante leading them across the line this time and collecting some points for the Langdon Building Sprint Classification. She didn't get the perfect score in year 12 for no reason at all. And to have an opportunity like that just slip underneath the radar. And it wasn't that she had to slide out from third or fourth wheel, make an acceleration. She calculated when she had to be where to just do a turn across the line and take those points. And on the other hand, Sarah Roy has been swinging across at the back and letting people in and not going through to work anymore. Now Shara Gillow has got herself to the back. Just have a good look at everybody. And I think it's almost time for Gillo to have a crack on the climb, see if she can split this bunch, get rid of Hosking, take some other riders with her who are all willing to work, get rid of Hosking, get rid of Sarah Roy, and the rest of them, they've got nothing to wait for. You make it sound so easy. Easy in principle. Tell your legs what to do. Sometimes they'll just tell you to shut up. <laughs> yes, Jens. From my perspective, I think the riders with the best position at the moment now are Parsons, Heather and Gillow. They're three riders who have nothing to lose. They're climbing the best and really they can sit around at the others and say, we don't need to work too hard. When Mitchelton Scott catch us, we want to be in a good position. Whereas a rider like uh, Gigante or Holfsking are thinking, I want this break to last as long as possible. A lot of pressure on the shoulders of Sarah Roy at the back of this group. She needs to just hold on, but Parsons... This Robbie, is an acceleration. Parsons in the white colours. She's proven herself to be climbing strongly. Bloor has been dropped now from the specialised team. Well, not a full-blooded attack, but definitely a good acceleration. Out of the saddle, took a few lengths, and it brought the reaction. Now, Chloe Hosking, you can see that pedalling style. That is starting to go a little bit square for the sprinter from Ale Cipollini. Sarah Roy also having to put in a much greater effort. It's so smooth here at the front, Michaela Parsons. It's always great to watch the different styles and as you say that how, how efficient or how relaxed and comfortable riders are and she has just looked like she's ridden within herself this entire 60k. Number 77 Parsons looking good this is Grace Brown leading the chasing group missing from the chasing group the defending, defending champion Shannon Molsey has not made it across to this group. Well we saw the attacks from the bottom of the climb and Going into that time on the climb, we said it'd be interesting to see how they tackle it. They need to really light things up from the bottom and use that long section up the highway. It's exactly what Mitchelton Scott did. And the tactic with Grace Brown was perfect. She was there the lap before, went on the attack on her own, but the team picked her up at the top of the climb and look how handy she is now. The one doing all the pace making. May not get over the climb this time because this needs to be a full gas chase all the way through to the finish if they're going to catch that lead group. Mitchelton Scott with four in this group and one out in front. Five of their six riders who started the race are represented at the sharp end. So they've got riders to sacrifice and that's really important but the weight of the race is on them. All the other riders in this group can sit back and say Mitchelton Scott you started it, you finish it, we'll come along for the ride. So in this group of 10 or so, we have four from Mitchelton Scott. We also have Brody Chapman, Ella Bloor, now Jamie Gunning on the left-hand side. Strong riding now again by Kennedy up the climb. Kennedy again from the bottom of the climb, that big acceleration. So over the top of Grace Brown, quick look over the shoulder. This is everything she's got. 
Straight away the reaction from Roper, but there's a few lengths between them, but this will be another sacrificial lamb. Kennedy just winding things up for the rest of the team, and this will be all about Amanda Spratt. And after the year she had in 2018, you would expect she should be able to romp away with this one. And Spratt looks so comfortable sitting in second spot behind Roper. Lucy Kennedy opens up a slight gap over the chasers. The lead group about to make the left-hand turn onto Mount Buninyong. Here they are, just a matter of metres away from doing that left-hand turn. Brody, I got the impression that Kennedy's acceleration was a bit too forceful, a little bit too hard. Chloe Hosky, the sprinter, struggling with the climb. The Commonwealth Games gold medalists, this is the part of the course that she does not like, and she's never hidden that fact. Great riding by Chloe, though, and really smart to get herself in the break early on. Yes. Safe, uh, smart, and also great for her sponsors. It was the only way she could win the race. So hats off for Chloe in the manner in which she's approached it. But, Robbie, you mentioned of Lucy, I agree. She's going to be more powerful in this last part of the climb when they go up over the KOM, given how light and strong she is. So I think she could have timed that a little bit better and, and waited till the next section of the climb. Parsons at the front. Now Shara Gillow, she's hearing the news about the chasing behind. And Shara Gillow, four-time Australian time trial champion, is making a move, but the response... Heather's been distanced from, as well. The response from Sarah Roy is impressive for a noted sprinter. Yep, Sarah Roy straight on it. See if she can keep that up to the top of the climb because Gillow, well, she knows what's going on behind and she would have been biding her time waiting for this moment. So she's executing the plan at the moment. And even though initially Roy is covering her, she can't be put off by that. If she's going to go, she's just got to go and try and blow her up. This is that easier part of the climb. It's still yet to really kick up. Easier was in inverted commas. <laughs> well, this also easier in terms of gradient. It still hurts, but for a pure climber, it's hard to get rid of someone like Sarah Roy in that situation. But she's burning them all the way up, and as the road kicks up again, you'll see the likes of Roy really start to struggle, and now she's losing the wheel of Shara Gillow. So for specialised women, this is not great, because Jamie Gunning's back there following the wheels of Roper and Mitchelton Scott, and both of her teammates have been dropped from this group, which is now only four. Left, Minnie Parsons, then Sarah Gigante in the pink from Rock Sold Attacker. At the back, Sarah Roy, and trying to lead this aggression is Shara Gillow, who we all thought was sick at the start of the day, but is clearly not. No, she's not. She's riding brilliantly at the front here, really taking responsibility for the race. And Sarah Gigante, one of the youngest riders in the race, sitting in second position. Parsons in white, just surviving at the back. Just. She looks so smooth and controlled early on the climb. I just saw her take a little look over her shoulder, which is never a good sign, but she seems to be gathering herself now, riding back into the wheels. Sarah Roy moves to the front, and now Gillo on the right side. She's had a couple of accelerations, but there's not much left in the tank to go again. And Sarah Roy is intimidating them by going to the front. Is that the best you've got? I can handle that. Sarah Roy, this is as well as she's ever climbed. And Sarah Gigante. It's a 19-year-old. She always looks like this. She looks like she's putting a lot of effort into her climbing, but in fact, that's just her style works for her. In fact, I think she's still just 18 years of age. Again, Gillow. So in sight of the stages, QOM, Shara Gillow goes again on this steep part of the climb. Reaction immediate from Sarah Roy. The four still together, Parsons and Gigante. They're able to react to that acceleration. So just four in front. And... The specialised women's riders being dropped. That's actually good news for Mitchelton Scott behind. May get more of a contribution in the chase from the specialised team. Gillow is the best climber from this group. When you look at her long track record racing internationally, but she doesn't have the explosive power to create the gap. And that, when we talk about style, we've seen that with some sprinters. Certainly some of these sprinters are actually able to get themselves over because it's just around 15 or 20 seconds of explosion. She may not be able to create the gap the first time up the climb that she really attacks, but when she can do that time after time, well, that will be telling. Problem now is Sarah Roy hasn't been working with this group for the last lap as we Tara have Heather the return returns. of Taryn Heather. This is Lucy Kennedy now. She's got the gap and they're 500 metres from the top of the climb and it's still Emily Roper who is on the front. Righty, she's doing a lot of work. There is Amanda Spratt winding up to pounce. She looked like she was starting to wind up to go over the top. We'll see. No, she's slotted back in. So 
Definitely having a look there, Amanda Spratt, closely, considering the options. Closely monitoring her in the Virtue Cycling, that's Rachel Nayland, silver medalist from the World Championships in 2012, former winner of the Canel Evans Road Race. Emily Roper doing a mountain of work. Number 24, Jamie Gunning. She is rising to be one of the future prospects for Australian cycling. Number eight is Spratz. The blue colours then for Rachel Nalen. Brody Chapman is being dropped. Rebecca Wysak off in the distance. This is Lucy Kennedy. Shannon Molseeder has certainly been eliminated as a contender to go back to back. Well, very similar to the last lap up here. Mitchelton Scott Spratz. on the attack. It's the Spratt attack. Uh, She's going to try and get across to Kennedy. The forecast coming from the Weather Bureau of McEwen. It is Roper who's done all the work and is desperately chasing Spratt. She did speak on the Friday and she said one of the riders she fears is 53 Emily Roper who has to get there and get there now. She is giving it everything she's got to Roper. She saw Spratt go. She reacted straight away. Spratt is across but how much has Kennedy got left now to give back out of the saddle through big the stages QAM. Big chain ring over the top. Spratt goes to the big chain ring and Roper returns with Jamie Gunning. Gunning is the one to watch for me. She looks so comfortable she's barely breathing hard and she's really benefited from all this cat and mouse kennedy spratt roper and gunning 230 behind the leaders Get your dose of retail therapy at one of Ballarat's many boutique stores, offering one-of-a-kind handmade pieces from homewares and fashion to jewellery and beauty. Find a gift for someone special and experience the very best of Ballarat retail. Two minutes and 14 seconds, the advantage for what is a reduced leading group. They're still riding strongly. They have one passenger, Sarah Roy, from the Mitchelton Scott team. Rightly so, with key teammates from that squad doing the chasing. She has a big responsibility to sit on that leading group. The previous time up Mount Buninyong, there was a lot of aggression shown by Shari Gillo from the FDJ team. Back in the main peloton, Lucy Kennedy has put some cards on the table. So too has Amanda Spratt. And by the looks of it so far, Emily Roper, she's got a full house. She's got plenty to play. She's been able to cover every move so far. She's done a lot of work on the climb itself. Last time through, Kennedy went from the bottom. It left Roper to chase her all the way to the top, then cover the move of Amanda Spratt. So now she's got to look back at that and say, well, they're going to keep attacking me. Now's the time to save some energy, do a little bit less, take advantage of the numerical supremacy of Mitchelton Scott. What we've seen too with Spratt as being the protected rider is uh, certainly what on our screens now you're seeing Gracie Elvin and Rachel Nalen. Uh, obviously with Elvin she's got teammates up the road with no motivation to chase them down so it's really Nalen's responsibility there in the navy blue of the Team Ver 2. These are the two chasers, they've just gone off that group with Kennedy, Roper and Spratt and Gracie Elvin wearing number five. She's a dual winner of the race. Not a pure climber by any stretch of the imagination. Not a pure sprinter either. She's good at everything. She's a dangerous woman to have at the front of the race. Yeah, so these riders have come back to that group of Spratt, Leapfrog, and they're going up the road. And this is Chloe Hosking. They're about to pick up as they ride through the grounds of Fed Uni. So through this technical section, little undulations up and down, tight corners. This left-hander is really nasty. It comes as a surprise, much like your first bite of wasabi. It stings and brings a little bit of a tear to the eye. I've heard that sushi in Buninyong is world-class. <laughs> For Chloe Hosking, number 49, flick of the elbow, shake of the head, uh-uh. Time to collect the ticket and sit on and try and hold on. It's not over. They'll come through, they'll get two laps to go. 26 kilometres still to race. That is the main chase pack back in the distance. So a lot of riders have been able to come back, it looks like. These fact, are that's the, the other side of Fed Uni. They so. are. So these are the leaders. They've done the right-hand turn out of the university as the main group are doing the right-hand turn into the university. Interesting to see this Taryn Heather from Specialised Women's Racing keeps getting sort of dropped off when the, chain, the pace changes up the climb but manages to time trial her way back. She's a great time trial athlete. Switched over to do a bit of Ironman 70.3 for a couple of years and did a very, very handy job indeed. But back 
in a place which, which is most comfortable for her, and that's certainly in a break. This is Parsons. She leads the stages at QOM classification. Shah Regillo is next in line. The first of the under 23 riders in the pink and blue colours of the attacker squad. Rock Salt attacker, that is Sarah Gigante. It's then Taryn Heather in the dark blue. Sitting at the back is Sarah Roy. Time to eat. You were in the car when Luke Durbridge won this national title, Robbie, and you continually reminded him of the simple things. Eat and drink. And all he did to thank me was swear at me. <laughs> but he ate and he drank and he went on to win. That's the most important. It's underestimated how important it is, though, to be reminded of the basics. Well, also, sometimes going up this feed zone can be really tricky if you're in a big group. You can't always get the bottle uh, that you need from your team support. And if you're not drinking and it's a really hot day here, you're going to find out seven laps in and you're really going to be limited by the physiology. You know, it becomes limited by not having enough blood volume, your blood pressure's not right, and your gut doesn't have enough nutrition. Look, it is a really simple concept, and people sometimes laugh, say, yeah, as if you need to be reminded to eat and drink. But when the body's under pressure and psychologically under pressure in the pointy end of the race, you forget, you just skip it because you're suffering, you're trying to get your heart rate under control, you're trying to ride the race and think about tactics and you let the small simple things go. It seems stupid but it happens so often and sometimes good to just get a reminder, just don't forget it, do it now. Yeah. I don't care if you swear at me, just do it. The other good thing about eating is it helps you move to the back. You can say, oh, I'm trying to find a gel, I can't roll a turn, I'm, I'm struggling to get stuff out of my pocket. It's a very good strategy for not doing a turn. The I leaders, would. their advantage now down to just inside two minutes. Well, the strategy for being at the back for Sarah Roy is saying, well, I've got my teammates coming, Amanda Spratt, Lucy Kennedy, and, well, the first chase-up from her team at the moment is Gracie Elvin along with Rachel Nayland, just under two minutes behind this group, but they're coming through to get two laps to go, and we saw the willingness already of Shara Gillo to go on the attack. She's already started to turn the screws on this group and I think this time on the climb she can offload some others, possibly Sarah Roy. And she's just turned the screws on both shoes. She's tightening up the shoes. She looks as if she's trying to take advantage of this downhill run on the flat section into Buninyong. She is preparing for her next attack. The other thing about Gigante is she's not a rider who's, who would be just saying, I'm just happy to be here, I'm a young woman, I, I'm not experienced. Gigante is the kind of rider who feels like she could probably win this race outright, and this is why she's looking around to see how she can win it. I'm just sensing, talking of inexperience, a little bit of inexperience maybe on the part of Michaela Parsons. She's been doing a lot of work. Others reluctant to roll through because they know they're coming to the climb, they want to get that little bit of a breather, they're wary of Shara Gillo, and they've just been letting... Parsons do the work and say, no, just, just keep going, keep going, and she does. So she's got to be very careful. She's not going to pay for that this time up the climb. Two laps remaining, two times up the Midland Highway and then up Mount Buninyong. Number 10, Shara Gillow, will attack this lap. She absolutely has to, and we know that she doesn't have enough explosion to really do damage in the final lap or in a sprint, so she has to absolutely turn the screws. We've seen her win stages of the Women's Giro d'Italia. She's won mountain stages internationally and won the time trial here and, and at Learmonth and also on the other course of the other side of Buninyong. So we know she can climb. This would be an amazing result for her to wear the road champions jersey all season for Francais de Jure. It was a big move for Shara Gillow to move across to the French squad, to leave the Mitchelton Scott team. And I think she's really embraced being the team leader on a French team. And she's taken across with her now Lauren Kitchen, who's part of that team as well. She's in a good place. Number 38, Sarah Gigante, both mum and dad are here, roadside and bursting with pride, as they should be. Silver medalist at the Junior World Championships last year and a perfect score in her final year at school. You'd have to say now a shoe-in to win gold in the under-23 women's event. Not quite sure exactly of the other under-23s behind if they're part of that chasing group, but yes. uh, certainly Giganti doing a gigantic ride. So Gunning is also under-23 and certainly a rider I think can win the overall as well, riding for special. Here she goes. Shara Gillow, she hasn't waited long. As soon as the road goes upwards, she's attacked, and Sarah Roy, she knew it was coming. She's been on her wheel now for a couple of minutes, waiting for this very moment. What Gillow's got to be careful of doing is just winding up and then taking Roy for a free ride. I think it's better, as a pure climber, to change speeds. Go, stop, ease off. 
change it and make Roy sprint every time, that's going to burn the sprinter's legs and she's a better chance of getting rid of her rather than just a long sustained effort on this. This part, there's only three or four percent in gradient. So we're seeing there Minnie Parsons being dropped. She's already in the QOM jersey, uh, but unable to hold on at that pace. Now coming across that start-finish line are the chasers. Gracie Elvin from Mitchelton Scott, Rachel Nalen, Team Ver2, and originally from the break, the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games winner, Chloe Hosking, still hanging in there, looking moderately comfortable now that she's got some company. But she won't like the view as she's just swung left back onto the Midland Highway. That's where she was dropped from that leading group. So I'm sure she'll uh, wave goodbye to these two, Gracie Elvin and Rachel Nayland, as they try and get across to the lead group where things are really starting to splinter now. And now, Taryn, Heather has been distanced. Sarah Roy has slipped to third position. So she slipped from being right up behind Shara Gillow. That will give Gillow some confidence. But Sarah Gigante is putting in a Sarah Giant performance. She certainly is. Here's another acceleration out of the saddle again for Gillow. Look at the little gap to Roy now. Opened up to just a length. Oh, squeezing just to get back on there. The road just starts to ease off in gradient again through this section. But Gillow, she's, like we said a lap ago, do it last lap. Do it again this lap, and each time they'll find it harder and harder to react. And Roy's, I think, really going to struggle on the steeper slopes if Gillow can go again. Smart riding there from Roy to be on the left-hand side of the road. The, ro the wind is coming from there, right? So she's just trying to get any type of advantage she can, similar to here to Hosking. Riding on the left-hand side gives her a bit of an advantage. Rachel Nayland here in the blue colours. She has three bronze medals and a silver medal at the National Championships. She's also been a silver medalist at the World Championships. Desperate for gold. And she needs to have a similar strategy to Shara Gillow. She's got really similar weapons. Great climate, good time trialist, not particularly quick in a sprint. Got to go long range. Two laps to go, that's exactly what she's doing. But Shara Gillow, she's got that, that other bit of ammunition. She's a very and, good time trialist. And look at the fight here. Sarah Roy is at her limit, but getting onto the wheel of Shara Gillow to let her know I'm still here and trying to bluff her into backing off. They're about to hit that left-hand corner. It actually dips down very slightly. It's that false flat section before the final part of the climb, and she knows she can't give her a length head start, start in third position, be right on the wheel. It could come down to that when Gillow goes on the steepest part of this climb. Gillow, look over the shoulder, assess the damage. She knows she's got them on the ropes. Now she just has to ease back, catch her breath a little bit, and really nail it on this final part of the climb. This is the next group through the feed zone. This is Rachel Nalen, followed then by Gracie Alvin. Chloe Hosking still fighting, still holding in. It's then Lucy Kennedy, the tall figure from Mitchelton Scott, followed next by Amanda Spratt. It's then Jamie Gunning, and the gap is opening up behind. Emily Roper is being distanced, so too is Brody Chapman. You were talking earlier, Robbie, about Emily doing a little bit too much work. You know, she was riding confidently, but also ab aggressively. And sometimes a big part of this is around how much energy can I conserve and how much poker can I play? How much can I sit back and say to Spratty, hey, not worry about it? Look at how tight Sarah Roy is sitting the wheel in the gutter, looking for every little bit of protection in second position behind Gillow. And Gillow's just realised, I've got to get across to that gutter. The very slightest of breezes from here's the, the gap. right. And here the gap starting is now to go. starting to open up. Sarah Roy is being distant. She'll be grateful for Sarah Gigante slotting in. But Gillow, she hasn't quite been able to create that move. Gillow's still driving. Gigante has been enormous. Well, and helping Roy out, as you say, by when you bridge that gap and, and provide a space there between and she means she's got a wheel for Roy to sit on. It actually does her a little bit of a favour, a service, but she's certainly gritting her teeth, working hard. A oh, great ride. So of Sarah far. Roy really clamping on there giving it everything she's got to stay in the wheel. And Gillow, we talked about that slight breeze. She really needed to hug that gutter, I think, a little bit harder and just let them hit the wind that little bit more. Now she's got the steeper section of the climb. This is where she's got to sink the dagger in. And Shara Gillow is still riding the big chain ring. And there is the gap. Sarah Roy, she's been climbing in the drops, looking for aerodynamics. They're going up this climb so quickly. Finally, Gillow has some breathing space. And Sarah Gigante, across the top, will be prepared to work. We had three riders chasing.
Well, Sarah Roy, she's been in the red zone since the bottom of this climb, just trying to hang in there on the wheel of Shara Gillo. She'll be relieved now she's gotten rid of Roy Gigante, looking very smooth, actually looking the better of the two at the moment. Disadvantage, they've offloaded Roy. When she gets caught by the group behind, she will become the pursuer of this too. She'll take a breather, slow right down, drop back, and she'll be the one doing the work. Or Unless will she can she? get herself back on over the top. If she can get back on, sit on. If you can't, sit up. On the previous lap, we saw Taryn Heather drop. She returned. Roy's the kind of rider that could absolutely get back on. But look, I know we say this a lot about a rider like Sarah Gigante, but just remind yourself, she's 18 years old. She did VCE and completed it just two months ago. An extraordinary rider, and she is absolutely taking it to these world-class, you know, two-time Olympian Shara Gillo. So really impressive, aggressive racing, opportunistic, doing everything she can. Shara Gillo. Maintaining the rhythm right in the big gear. She has a diesel engine. Young Sarah Gigante just behind her. The gap isn't big for Sarah Roy. You sense that the cameraman is looking for Sarah Roy. There she is. Sarah Roy can get back on here. She will get back on, I think, across this top section. They've got the left-hand turn. It flattens out, and the road dips away very fast. So it looks like Roy will be able to get back onto these two. That's very important for the Mitchelton Scott riders behind. They've still got Roy in front to sit on. But they still need to catch this group because last lap, they've got another time to go after the finish line. They will be able to offload Roy again and the damage will be greater. And these are the chases and Brody Chapman has made it back. So too has Emily Roper. Jamie Gunning is in there and Rachel Nayland. They're the riders not in the yellow colours of Mitchelton Scott. Second position is Amanda Spratt. Gracie Alvin is down at the back of this group. She's been distanced. Lucy Kennedy is the rider wearing number three. Spratt looks comfortable in second position. Number five is Gracie Elvin, just holding on. Kennedy increases the tempo again, almost at the top of the climb. I don't think they can make it. Two minutes to make up in 20 kilometres and only one more climb and you can see Gillo and Gigante are super motivated. They have to chase because there is every chance that Roy gets dropped permanently next time up the climb. They have to chase but I don't think this is the moment to start it. I think they've got the numbers there. They've got Gracie Elvin. They need to get over the top of the climb together, keep those numbers, then chase as hard as they possibly can, sacrifice one by one and leave Amanda Spratt to do it on the climb. She's shown all through last season that she's got it, she can do it. She's been performing in the biggest classics in the world against the world's best. They've got to deliver her to the climb the last time, get her as close as possible to that front group. It is Spratt. Kennedy and Alvin for Mitchelton Scott. They've got their teammate Sarah Roy in the leading group of three. Brody Chapman is here, Emily Roper. Cryo Castle takes you back in time to a legendary land of adventure where knights, dragons, wizards, kings, queens, and princesses reign supreme. Cross the drawbridge and experience a kingdom of myth, magic and fantasy the whole family can enjoy with medieval jousting, archery, a classic maze and pantomimes awaiting you. It's all happening in the race for the Fed Uni Road National Championships with the break of three still holding on out in front. Amongst them, Shara Gillow, she's won the time trial four times. Sarah Gigante, she won all three gold medals in the under-19s one year ago. She now steps up to the under-23s and racing amongst the elites. And the former Criterium champion from Mitchelton Scott, Sarah Roy, wearing number seven. There's a chasing group, including former winners like Amanda Spratt and Gracie Alvin, at one minute and 52 seconds behind. Robbie McEwen, Bridie O'Donnell for number seven, Sarah Roy. She was dropped the last time up the climb. She returned. She has to hold on this time. And that'll be the instruction from her director sportive. Just hang on to them. Do whatever it takes. And I think she rode that well last time. She did go into the red zone, but she'll also have seen that the others were pretty close to their absolute limit, and she was able to ride back on. So next time up, 
I think near the top, she can afford to let a little gap open. She's got the power to ride herself back on when the road flattens out over the top of the climb. And with a minute 49, it's going to be very, very difficult. Oh, I'm going closer towards impossible for that chasing group to catch these three riders. And number 38, Sarah Gigante, she is in the under 23 category. So we could be going back to the men's race of 2006 when it was Will Walker, who was under 23, won the race and then the following year they changed the rules to have the under 23s and the elites race separately. Will Walker was a member of the Brunswick Cycling Club. So too is Sarah Gigante. It is set up for an under 23 to win the race outright. Well, what you've highlighted is the challenge that we have in women's cycling where there's still the same motivation, passion, commitment from younger women riders, but not the same number of them. So they don't hold a whole separate race because it would be a very different type of dynamic. But here she is. She's not afraid of these riders. Absolutely aggressively blowing them away with only one more climb to go. And Shara Gillow has had enough of Sarah Roy sitting on. And this will be interesting tactically to see what Gillo and Roy decide to do because Sarah Gigante could be on target to ride away with this race. That looks now like Gillo has been told, sorry, but I've got no choice. I am not allowed to contribute, so you'll have to close this yourself. She's not going to get bluffed into chasing down Sarah Gigante. This and is the gap so opens. This is... A Completely characteristic uh, attack by a rider like Gigante. You can see she rolls through that corner much more quickly and then looks around, sees they're off her wheel and thinks, I'm having a go. And that's what we spoke about with Shara Gillo at the very first time we saw her through that same corner. And you see, Gillo starts to close it because she let it open in the first place, but then she looks back and says, no, actually, you should do it because you've been sitting on. We've seen Gigante ride the individual pursuit for juniors on the track. We've seen her ride the time trial and win that in for national championships she rode away from the under 19 race last year and this woman is fearless aggressive and absolutely courageous in the way that she races which is so impressive uh, and again has nothing to lose today as Sarah Gigante is off the front taking this race by the scruff of the neck let's head down to Sophie Smith who is with the mayor of the city of Ballarat I'm with the Mayor of Ballarat, Samantha McIntosh. Samantha, I want to ask you, Ballarat and Bunnyong have provided a stunning backdrop to the National Championships for many years now. What does this event mean to the city? This is enormous uh, economic return to our city. It's bed nights, it's, it's a fabulous draw for tourism, but most importantly, it's the inspiration that it's providing for not just our community, but the country and internationally. It's about that inspiration that gets people fit and healthy, encourages people to be on bike and have a ball. And it's been extended this year. We've added events like the paracycling. Has that made a difference? I can't hear the audio but from it's that also here. making yeah, uh, the program thanks. much more diverse. <laughs> to see one of our local heroes, Christian Aspey, here actually getting a bronze medal was something that I know many of our locals had a bit of a tear for. Uh, he's an amazing role model leader and one that will inspire many into the future. It's wonderful to see Cycling Australia working with our local community and Fed Uni to make sure that the whole of our community is involved, that the whole of our country has all sorts of diverse opportunities. So not just about the open elite men and women. Uh, what we really hope to see as a city is that we can bring uh, female cyclists right up there as well. We want everyone to have that same opportunity, girls and women, uh, the same as boys and men do. And it's really been taking a big step forward. Robbie McEwen on the topic of big steps forward. Sarah Gigante off the front on her own. She's taken the odd little look behind, but this is a fearless ride. She knew straight after the corner, Gillow is not in my wheel. Right, I'm taking the opportunity. Off I go. And she has opened this gap right up, and Roy now has made a big mistake by not just quickly nipping across into the wheel. She's in the position she's been in a lot. You know, as an under-19 rider last year, there is no one in sight behind her, and she has nothing to lose with only one climb to go. We know she can time trial. Her family are here, her team are here, and, you know, this is the most amazing performance by a young rider we've seen in a very, very long time. So absolutely rooting for Sarah Gigandi to hold this whole peloton off. Uh, a great, you know, incredible move, an opportunistic time. Phenomenal performance. The bell sounds for Sarah Gigante. 
just 18 years of age for the first year stepping out of the junior category up into battling with the elites and the gap is widening with every pedal stroke on the last shot i noticed the dot in the distance she has around 250 meters lead on gillo and roy so sarah gigante looks like she is riding her way to the national title not just the under 23 she's going to win this whole race the way she rode that last climb right alongside shara gillo she's got nothing to fear here is Shara Gillo. Sarah Gigante is fully committed. This has turned into an individual time trial for her. And she'll take advantage of this cat and mouse. As you said earlier, Matt, you know, Roy will be forcing a chase by Gillo. We know Gillo's climbing well, but when she attacked on that last part over the QOM, Look at the distance now we're seeing. It's over 200 metres. There's bikes in the way. That'll, that'll mean there's less incentive for them to be able to visualise up at the climb. So incredible performance by Gigante. Really smart, really aggressive, and totally within her character. If Sarah Roy sticks with Shara Kilo over the top of the climb, she has to work to try and catch Sarah Gigante. That's the disadvantage for Gigante at this point. But before that can happen, Sarah Roy needs to survive this climb with Shara Gillow. Yeah, she has to get over the top with Gillow. And if they get over the top together, it'll just depend on what sort of gap Sarah Gigante can maintain at the top of the climb, being cheered on as she goes up the Midland Highway, the final time in this women's road race here at City of Ballarat National Championships. Sarah Gigante, one of the young riders in the race, in the under 23 category, but taking it to these experienced professionals and the might of the Mitchelton Scott team. Now, what they won't know is whether what's happening up the front. There aren't race radios in, in this uh, sort of format, and they'll be getting Gene Bates and other team staff telling them what's happening as they ride past. But there's not a lot of opportunity to hear what's going on. This is Grace Brown now on the front. She is burying the head to try and close down that gap. Jamie Gunning takes a look across the shoulder. Brody Chapman with the blue shoes is in this group. All black colours. Emily Roper is still there. Sarah Gigante, number 38. Understandably so. She takes a look across the shoulder, but she's still on the big chain ring. With the pain really setting in on this part of the climb, the Midland Highway just stretches out in front of you and seems never-ending. At the final climb of this race, they've done it so many times already, and Gigante, she just got to find that rhythm, get right on the red line and hold it there all the way through. And she's just ridden past on the side of the road, Lauren Kitchen, the teammate of Shara Gillow, who was the one doing the chasing. No junior gears for this young rider anymore now that she's riding in open And races. Roy has been dropped and Shara Gillow now has to go into that time trial mode to see if she can catch the 18-year-old rising star of Australian cycling. Well, this is also great news for Gigante because even if Shara Gillow can catch her, Gigante, you would think, would be much faster at the finish. Just got to get rid of Sarah Roy. Still trying to hold her rhythm, Roy, not giving it up. But a bad situation for now for Mitchelton Scott. A disaster for Mitchelton Scott. Six riders in the race. The bronze, uh, the silver medalist, sorry, from the World Championships, Amanda Spratt in that team. And an 18-year-old is riding away. And you can hear the squealing from the side of the road. Those on Mount Buninyong know that history is on the verge of being made. Now we talk about history and we certainly saw on Friday night at the Criterium that the third place getter, Ruby Roseman Gannon, was actually not awarded the bronze medal overall and she was given the under 23 jersey and this is a question we need to ask ourselves again. Amanda Spratt now has broken away from that chase group and is trying to bridge across. She's obviously heard she can see her teammate Sarah Roy about 150 metres up the climb who's been dropped and then probably further up the climb if Spratty can see that far in front of this blue car here is Shara Gillow. So Sarah Roy, she needs to keep on charging in the hope that she can offer Amanda Spratt some assistance. Sarah Roy can't afford to wait yet. She's got to get herself to the top of the climb. Hope she's still there for Amanda Spratt because if she slows down too much, Spratt will go straight past. And if she does, she's got to keep going and continue the chase. This is Sarah Roy, number seven, third on the road. Just in front of her is Shara Gillow. Ahead of them is Sarah Gigante. Behind is the chasing Amanda Spratt. Obviously, when you're climbing, you know, everyone's pace is a little slower. So someone who's further up the road from you seems closer. But as, if they, if that contact isn't made up over the top, I think it'll be really challenging for Roy to be able to make a bridge back up to someone like Gillow. You can almost feel the hope and the motivation of Sarah Gigante. The body language screams everything is positive.
And although she's starting to rock and roll just a little bit, the rhythm is still really good. You l look at her face, mouth wide open, gulping in that oxygen. Quick look over the shoulder, but she's alert and she looks lucid. She doesn't look like she's about to crack. The looks across the shoulder are quick glances. They're not looks of concern, they're looks of assessment. And usually what you do when you're away on your own, you're looking around thinking, if I can't see in a quick glance, as you say, Matt, if I can't see the car or the rider, I'm going all right. I need to keep this pace. It's quite stressful being away on your own sometimes. You're not sure how you're going to go, but this big chain ring climbing up the steepest part of the climb, that is so impressive. We just talked about the stress of being off the front, and when you are leading, the gap is never big enough. You look over the shoulder, you think, oh, I'm, st I'm still not far enough in front. I can still be caught. And she'll be thinking that all the way through. But if she can hold this current rhythm, them, they will not catch her there in the distance and that is a little foreshortened Sprat, by the lens. Spratt in fourth position. Spratt is still capable from here. And I think Spratt will get to Roy a little bit too soon. There is to be a lot Roy. of help. So does Sarah Roy at this point, where it just flattens out ever so slightly, breathe and then even give 100 metres worth of sprinting for Amanda Spratt. I think Robbie was right. I think she needs to actually get over the top with her. Gigante. She is breathing hard to the top of the climb, but she is in front. She's still the woman to catch. It's hard to say at the moment if it would be better for Spratt just to keep Roy with her, not offload her, keep her over the top of the climb, and then use her in the chase. A two-up chase behind these two riders, get her across. Question is then, can Amanda Spratt beat the others in a sprint? Gillow, yes. Gigante? I'm not so sure. I'm not sure either, and I think we've seen, um, you know, Gigante was riding incredibly well in the Bay Crits, but not expending too much wasted energy. Interesting there, we're seeing Roy giving her a bit of an update, letting her know what's going on. Not sticking together, Spratt going on, getting the call from Sarah Roy. Shara just in front of you, Sarah off the front alone, go for it. So she's left her behind, Roy will be no further assistance to Amanda Spratt. She's got to do it on her own. There are the gaps you can see, but in terms of seconds, these are big gaps. It is Shara Gillow number 10 in second position on the road. The 18-year-old sensation, Sarah Gigante, going across the top of the climb. And Shara Gillo is not looking as strong as Gigante at this point. And we know she doesn't have the same kick in her, so Sarah will be absolutely punching over the top of that climb and really using the flat and descent to the best of her ability. She's also going to corner better than Shara through the technical elements of Federation Uni. We've seen plenty of evidence of that. She's been gapping Gillo through the corners. Spratt now chasing 200 to the top. She has got Gillo at about 150 metres. This is a tough chase. Spratt riding visibly quicker than the others, but now they're over the top. Gigante into time trial mode and just got to try and hold them off. She can't afford to sit up and wait for Gillo. Spratt really needs to get to Gillo, work together and see if they can close that gap down. Sarah Roy, she's gone. This is Amanda Spratt. The others are now out of sight and I think she's left it too late. Gillo around the corner, Gigante off in the distance. 13 years the difference between Amanda Spratt and Sarah Gigante and around about 350 metres. It's enormous. Well, experience counts for nothing from now on. It is just a time trial to the finish. Gigante trying to hold off the experienced pros in Gillo and Amanda Spratt. And I think she can do it. Here she is, the race leader, Sarah Gigante. The Brunswick Cycling Club has an incredible record of producing great talent. And another one, Sarah Gigante, who just went down there to try it. When she won three gold medals last year in the under-19 category, when asked the question, what's the secret to your success? The simple answer is to have fun. This looks like fun. And while she's a lot younger than the other two riders, she has won a lot of races. She's been riding a bike for a long time. So she comes with the confidence and the security of someone who knows how to be in this position. Well, we talk about experience. It doesn't just come in years, but it comes in experiences. And she's experienced winning plenty. And that is fun. This is Amanda Spratt, third on the road. 24 seconds, that's a lot of ground to make up. And Spratt now having to do it all on her own. For the Mitchelton Scott team, if Sarah Gigante does hold off and win, they'll be disappointed. 
but they might have a piece of paper out with a contract to line her up for the very, very near future. Exactly. She might be taking up med school or something else, engineering. I don't know what she's well, going to she's do She's doing year. science at Melbourne University as is. the precursor to medicine. After having received the perfect score, achieved the perfect score in year 12, is there anything Sarah can't do? Last year when I was training for the pursuit, the team pursuit in the Victorian team, she would be at the velodrome in Darabin International Sports Centre there uh, between sessions, um, sitting down with maths textbooks on her lap, doing some study. Uh, she's an incredibly diligent, hard-working young woman, but also absolutely great friends with a lot of the other riders that she trains with. The gap, Robbie? That's to Shara Gillow. So before it was 24 seconds, now it's 35. Amanda Spratt further back again. So the gap opening between first and second. Amanda Spratt should be gaining on Shara Gillow. I'm sure she would be picking her up quite shortly. This is Amanda Spratt, number eight from Mitchelton Scott. The sweat dripping off her nose. Fast up the climb this final time, but the gap I think is just too big to close it down on the fast part of the course now. Got this little this little kicker, just keep riding strong. It's what she's done all day, so I think it should be pretty easy for her to continue to do. But all you can do is encourage her doing a fantastic job, and that's what she'll be hearing out of the car. Uh, she physically, visibly looks more convincing than Spratt and Gillow at this point. Well, when you ride with that hunger and desperation, um, and as we said, she was smart enough to be in the break from the outset. So she's been leading this race or rolling turns with the leaders of this race for the last 94 kilometres. A uh, lot of confidence there and a lot of courage, and that's what's so impressive. And for Gillow, and she's still got her in her sights. And for Gillow to get the silver medal, she needs to stay away from Spratt. Well, and what we might see, depending on how the outcome of jersey allocation goes, it could be Gillow in a green and gold jersey all year round as the elite winner. And I don't know, we don't make the decisions from the comms booth on that one, but it certainly uh, will be an amazing victory for Gigante to take the overall. Well, that's the, that's the way the rule was applied in the under-23 criterium and the elite women's criterium. It was Ruby Roseman Gannon another Brunswick member, just like Sarah Gigante, who went across the line in third place. She didn't get given the bronze medal. She got the gold medal as the first under 23 rider. Regardless of how they award the jerseys and the medals, if Sarah Gigante goes across the line first, she's my Australian champion. Absolutely. And it's the ride of the day. The, the, Without question. It was the move of the day through Federation Uni two laps ago. Uh, it's absolutely the performance of the day. I wonder if that was a factor in Gillow stopping the chase behind Gigante when she went, thinking, she's under 23. I've got to beat Sarah Roy and the others behind me can afford to let her go. Sure, she'd love to win the race and she's going to chase all the way in. Could be a factor in how Gillow approached that final lap with Roy sitting on all the time. Don't just do all the work chasing someone who is an under 23. I think that's a convenient excuse that you'd give in your post-race press conference if you don't win the race overall. Well, regardless, here is the star of the show, Sarah Gigante. You run out of superlatives for a performance like this at 18 years of age. Shara Gillow sprinting out of the corner. She sits in second position on the road, but she's first amongst the elite women, those who are beyond the under-23 category, and she's been chased by former teammates. Amanda Spratt. We were talking before the race about how many times the early break has stayed away and the last time we remember this happening was 2011. Alexis Rhodes was riding for Garmin. She was in an early break with about 10 other riders and ended up winning that bunch sprint of 10 or 11 and no one predicted that break would stay away and here we are nine years eight years later same thing so a great ride by Gillo. She's won the TT four times but never won the road race. So we may have to backtrack a little and say maybe not a disaster for Mitchelton Scott because talking about Sarah Giganti, under 23, she'll receive that jersey. Shara Gillow leading the elite women. Amanda Spratt right behind her, could catch her, beat her in the sprint. Amanda Spratt could be the elite women's champion. Not a disaster at all. The jersey up for grabs. The under 23, the lead rider, the leader of the race, Sarah Gigante here at the front. Chased by Shara Gillow and Amanda Spratt. And Gigante, so quick through these corners. Two broken arms in May of last year, but it is not slowing her down at all. Whatever the case, wherever jerseys go, Sarah Gigante is the winner of the day. Well, it's a brilliant ride. And confirmation coming from Cycling Australia. They have just posted on their social media, if Gigante wins, she takes it all, under 23 and elite, 
that is the right decision. Awesome. Sarah Gigante is on target for under 23 and elite. She Bravo. is heading into Buninyong, a gold medal potentially part way around her neck. And that is absolutely the right decision, like it should be. You win the race as an under 23 or not, you should take it all. Because an under 23 can be in a professional team racing in Europe, why should she not carry the national champion jersey? So that is absolutely the way it should be. And in women's racing, unlike in men's racing, at the World Championships, there is no under 23 category. It's under 19s, then straight into the elites. Whereas in the men's, it's under 19s, under 23s, and then the elites. And therefore, they have a separate race between those. But all together, and Sarah Gigante from Rock Salt Attacker is changing those colours for a white jersey with green and gold bands. I hope people in, down in Buninyong are getting up to those barriers and they're going to be banging on the side of those as loudly as they can. This has been an absolutely outstanding ride by Sarah Gigante. So impressive. Well, she knows now. She takes another little look. She just has to keep it upright through to the finish to take this big win. I saw her just a little more careful through the corners as she made her way through Fed Uni. Shara Gillo not giving up in the chase, but the bird has flown. I'm sure that Sarah would have been aware of the crash with Luke Durbridge through here on a right-hand turn last year where he ended up breaking his collarbone. This is Shara Gillo, and through each of those corners, she's just losing maybe one second each time. And a long way off the apex, Robbie. What we're not seeing is the gap now back to Amanda Spratt, who was third on the road just a couple of kilometres ago. She's won this race twice before. She's been Australia's best performing female rider over the last season. So that's where we really want to know what that gap is between Gillow in second and Amanda Spratt from Mitchelton Scott in third place on the road. Well, this is Sarah Gigante, the leader of the race, number 38. Unheaded all the way into the finish now so she can start to enjoy the feeling and knowing that she'll be pulling on the green and gold jersey of Australian champion. Peter Tomlinson out of the car giving the instructions to Sarah Gigante about the gaps further behind. The crew from Peak Cycles in Heidelberg will be delighted because she's a regular on their Saturday morning bike ride and for all the guys on that ride their egos will be relieved to see just how good this kid that beats them up all the hills really is. She is world class as Spratt has made contact with Shara Gillow. Great riding by Amanda Spratt. We know she's had a cracking season. Uh, she certainly had the power of numbers today over someone like Shara Gillow, whose teammate wasn't able to finish today. So brilliant riding, very smart and tactical. What we need to know now, I think we can all bet that Spratt will be able to beat Gillow in a sprint. Yeah, I think so. Not we waiting about for it because Spratt is about to attack. <laughs> she's winding up to try and gap Shara Gillo because she still wants to try against the odds to close down that 42 second gap and catch Sarah Gigante. But I just cannot see it happening. No, she won't catch her. The gap is over 40 seconds to these two. <coughs> Spratt, she'll never stop trying all the way in, but another look over the shoulder from Sarah Gigante with one kilometre to go. And I'm just waiting for the big smile to spread across her face. She knows she's got it. She's enjoying this fast downhill section. She'll see the township of Buninyong any second now and the finish line stretching out in front of her. The cat and mouse game now being played in the race for the silver medal. Sarah Gigante is not making any mistakes, Bridie, by taking it easy. This is playing to Sarah's advantage. You know, she can now safely get herself into that finish line, hopefully give herself the celebration she deserves. I am just so pumped for her. I think this is interesting and stressful for these two riders of course they want to know where they can finish up 500 meters remaining for Sarah Gigante and she's not backing off the pedals until she's absolutely certain that she is there it's time though Sarah to start contemplating the celebration six Australian championship gold medals one year ago a silver at the world championships a perfect score in year 12 and a perfect score around Mount Buninyong Sarah Gigante at 18 years of age, one of the youngest in the race, is now the elite women's Australian road champion. Take a bow. Absolutely amazing. Such emotional scene seeing her so thrilled. Believe it, Sarah, you've done it. The race for silver. 
as Sarah Roy is still in contact. So Shah Regillo could potentially miss out on a medal. Roy just waiting for the cat and mouse and just, she can see them. She's almost in the slipstream. Spratt now opens up the sprint. So Roy will see the medals riding away from her. Spratt sprinting for the silver medal. Shara Gillo trying to hold on to get herself onto the podium. It is Spratt leading out with Gillo trying to stick there. And Roy is coming at Shara Gillo. Roy going to get the bronze medal. Shara Gillo has stopped. Sarah Roy over the top. She takes bronze and Gillow misses out completely. Wow, that's really frustrating. I, uh, she stopped, Robbie. I'm dumbfounded. She didn't even pedal for the last 50 metres. I don't think she knew she was there. What a ride. Great to see these two riders congratulating Gigante, the 18-year-old. Congratulations from Sarah Roy. Sophie Smith is down with the new Australian road champion. Well, I don't even know what to say, Sarah. You crossed the line there to the most raucous applause I've ever heard from this race. It's been confirmed that you are the Australian under 23 and also the elite women's champion. You're not meant to ask how do you feel, but how do you feel? You said you don't have words. I don't think I have any words. I can't believe it. Like, oh, I, I was hoping for a medal in the under 23s. I was really worried, like Jamie Gunning. I was like in order just to be racing against her and then to getting a breakaway for my idols and I don't know how I dropped them and I just I can't believe it I just can't believe any of this it's like more than a dream I wouldn't even dream this big I can't believe it what point of the race did you think you think you'd won or know you'd won um maybe after I crossed the line <laughs> not even now actually I can't believe it well yeah so I thought I had well, first I was just going in, hoping to finish the race because I know under 23 is often it's just hard to finish. And then I thought I'd play to my strengths and get in a breakaway, uh, avoid my weaknesses. Um, and yeah, I started to feel pretty good when Shara went up the second last lap up the hill and she was attacking. And I was like, hey, I can actually keep up. This is crazy. Oh my God, oh. Oh. Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> Big family, congratulations there. We'll let you go and collect your gold medals. Congratulations. Thanks, everyone. Just got. The one element coming into that interview that I'm a little bit confused about is what weaknesses, Sarah? We haven't found any. We turned to each other exactly the same moment and mouthed, what weakness? If there is one, it wasn't on display today. Yeah, it might uh, be on I know what the weakness is. She underestimates herself. She's the Australian champion, Spratt in second, Roy in third. Heartbreak for Gillow. Did she care about the minor it, it, places? Well, I got the impression she didn't care. Roy? Gold or nothing. And now it's nothing. <clears throat> I, I couldn't believe she didn't pedal through to the line to pick up a medal. She rode so well she deserved to be on the podium. But so too Sarah Roy. Sarah Gigante with all the emotion. She can't believe it. We can believe it. We know how good she is. She is the Australian road champion. <coughs> Mind-blowing. I know, the poor thing <laughs> didn't get a chance to see up. The disbelief on the face of Sarah Gigante, but everybody else can believe it. Even though she's only 18 years of age, she rides for fun, winning is fun. She is the elite Australian women's road champion. Amanda Spratt was in second, it was in Sarah Roy in third, Shah Regillo in fourth, Gracie Alvin, then Rachel Nayland, Emily Roper, impressive in seventh, Jamie Gunning, the second of the under 23s, then Brody Chapman with Lucy Kennedy rounding out the top 10. Third place at Sarah Roy, she was in the thick of the action all day long. She's now down with Sophie Smith. Sarah, did you know who Sarah Gigante was before this race? I definitely did. I know who Sarah is. Um, yeah, I'm super happy for her. She had a great ride out there today and, um, you know, she played the game well as well. She, she um, used her energy um, really, really 
in a clever way. So it's pretty impressive, actually. Not only was she strong, but she played the game really well, and uh, she put up with a, a little bit of bullying out there, which is, I think, pretty typical of, you know, some elite women um, dealing with a little under, ni under 19 girls stepping up and um, showing us how it's done. So yeah, f I'm I'm really happy for Sarah today. Tell me about your own race and that finish. Yeah, well, um, that's, I'm pretty proud of my ride today, um, to be honest. Uh, I really dug deep out there and I definitely, I, I wasn't sure how my form was. My preparation um, for this summer has been different to any other summer and, um, yeah, I'm definitely not in race form, but, uh, you know, our plan was to get some riders out in the early break and we made that happen. So uh, we stuck to the plan really well and um, for me to hang on to most of Shara Gillow's attacks up the climb, I just surprised myself with that actually. So, and really nice of the team to sort of give me that chance as well. And obviously, uh, you know, it's bittersweet. We're the target team here and, you know, we're a bunch of really strong professionals and of course we want to win and uh, a lot of people expect us to win and it is a, a, a bit of a loss. <laughs> It's a bit of a loss today, but uh, at the same time, I'm really proud of where my form is and I'm pretty excited for the rest of the season. Congratulations. Thank you. A few key elements coming out of that interview from Sarah Roy. Firstly, the class in which she conducted herself in congratulating Sarah Gigante. Secondly, yeah, she should be really proud of the way she performed. But the comment about the bullying of an 18-year-old out there in the breakaway and then the 18-year-old showed them how it was done. Really incredible, and I think you know that happens in in breakaways. It happens in lots of sport. A bit of heckling, a bit of trash talking, and you can see why um, that could be a strategy that a, a seasoned pro would try on a young person. I think maybe called bullying for want of a better word, possibly, but getting a young, strong rider to do as much as possible because they fear her, and rightly so. It was out of respect. A lot of respect, though, for the silver medalist. She was the silver medalist at the World Championship. She's won here twice before. Here's Amanda Spratt. Civil medalist Amanda Spratt, how was your race? Did you know who Sarah Giganti was before uh, before starting? Yeah, I certainly did, and um, you know she's a humongous talent. We saw what she did last year here in Ballarat, so she was always, always on our radar for sure. Um, we were really happy with Sarah Roy in that early break of seven. She's a strong rider and worked so hard for the team, so it was good to give her that opportunity. And um, we heard that she was struggling a little bit, so that's why we really ramped it up, and I attacked across on that final lap. But um, yeah, I mean, well done to Sarah. She had a great ride. Tell me about your own race. Did uh, the entire event unfold as you thought it may? Yeah, I mean, normally there always is an early break, so we were happy with that. Ideally, we would have had one more rider there, but still Roy's such a strong rider, and like I said, we're really happy to give her the chance. Um, she works so hard for us most of the year. Uh, and then we always know from behind we have to race hard, and that gap kind of got out, so we knew we started ha having to bring that back to give ourselves a few more options. And yeah, I mean, we caught everyone but one rider, and she really deserves that national title. What was going through your mind those last few laps? Uh, I just knew that I still had to be patient, just trust that the team were doing a good job and also we knew Roy was feeling good. We only got word sort of with one and a half laps to go that she was starting to struggle. So we still knew we had the opportunity on the climb. I think we have two of the strongest climbers in Australia on our team, so we really had to use that. Congratulations. Thank you. Spratt certainly knew who Sarah Gigante was. They've just recently ridden the Lexus of Blackburn Bay Crits together. And at the launch for that series, just before Christmas, Sarah Gigante was there and she was asked what she's looking forward to about the Bay Crits. Her response was, I can't wait. I'm on a team with Amanda Spratt. She's my hero. Robbie, she just got the better of her hero. She got the better of a lot of her idols today. She rode the perfect race. Of course the winner rides the perfect race, but I think they underestimated her. We look back at the highlights, there was that early break. Mitchelton Scott put Sarah Roy in the break. Also Chloe Hosking, great ride to get herself into that break. A fall early on, uh, no news, but we hope certainly that... Uh, Jennifer Darmody it was Darmody's that fell. Okay. And on this climb, number 38, Sarah Gigante, as they were going up Mount Bunyong, at that point, Mitchelton Scott still would have been pretty confident. As they tried to take the race on, Spratt here attacking with four laps to go. The black colours, Emily Roper, she was emerging as a real threat today. That Gold Coast rider had a, a really strong day, as we said earlier, um, Robbie, but the challenge for her and Jamie Gunning is as an individual rider, when you're outnumbered by Mitchelton Scott riders, you have to make decisions about should you go, should you chase. You choose what you react to, and sometimes it's not the right one, then you get caught out. Later on into the race, Sarah Roy started to struggle in front. Now, her teammates were backing her and said, with a lap and a half to go, we knew she was in trouble. 
She'd been sitting on, waiting for the teammates to come. Gigante, she saw the opportunity. A couple of lengths out of the corner to Gillo, and she stomped on the pedals, had a look back and said, this is me, see you later. It was a tiny little gap, lap to go, time trial mode. Such an impressive ride by her, but she's been here before as an under-19 champion. She won here in Bunningong a year ago. So she really just had to call on all that confidence and experience. So she tried to ride across the gap as in the background Amanda Spratt was doing the same. I think the mistake of Mitchelton Scott, they didn't keep things close enough for when their teammate Roy was not able to follow the leader of the race. And Gigante just went further and further in front out to almost a minute by the time she came into the final kilometre. Amanda Spratt, she got Gillow in her sights, but they were only ever going to fight it out for the silver medal. The gap grew and grew. It got out to 43 seconds, I think, there by the finish and gave Gigante an opportunity to finally realise here with 50 metres to go what she was actually able to achieve. It's just outstanding. The only thing she got wrong today was not zipping up the jersey. Everything else, 10 out of 10. Brilliant performance by Sarah Gigante, that look of disbelief, the emotions overflowing, and then the sprint for second, convincing with Spratt. Gillow stopped 50 metres to go and was caught by Sarah Roy for third, and there's Mum with the big embrace. She must be bursting with pride. Sarah Gigante's dad was also roadside today. Heading now down to the presentations. The riders that you can see off on the right-hand side of the screen, the elite men, they're starting at 12.30. We'll be live with that race on SBS from 2 p.m. And I wonder what Mitchelton Scott, the men's squad, will have learned from what happened with the women's team. They've been able to learn plenty over the years on this course. Of course, like Bunny Young host stage, for so long, they'll know what to do. Third place today, it was a phenomenal performance. She was in the break all day, riding for Mitchelton Scott. Sarah it was a phenomenal performance. David McKenzie conducted the presentation. The gentleman on the stage with Samantha, the cap on, that's like Duncan Murray, the there. chairperson of Cycling Australia, and Councillor Samantha McIntosh, the mayor of the city of Ballarat, a great supporter of cycling. Her daughter's ridden these national championships yeah, a few times, and she has a real bias, bias towards watching the women's race out. because of that connection. It's always good for a rider like Roy to get on the podium because, as she said, it's about the team having confidence in you, that you, that you can hold your place in a break and do the work. She's ranked third in the world. She's the silver medalist from the Road World Championships in 2018. Today she is second, and what a performance, Amanda Spratt. Amanda Spratt, she has won here twice before, now the silver medal. She'd be slightly disappointed. A wry smile. Normally, Amanda Spratt absolutely beaming. A wry smile as she got on the podium. Silver medal for Spratt, as she did collect at the World Championships in Innsbruck, Austria, at the back end of 2018. And once again, the third she started the out. season strongly. She's got a big program of races throughout the Australian Spratt. Summer of Cycling. Federation University presenting the OWL, the Fed Uni mascot, the, the OWL, fitting for the, the gold medalist. The day, Absolutely, the a bookish young woman. The women's national championships that I've ever seen in the history. She's just 18 years of age. She rides for Rock Salt Attacker and Brunswick Cycling Club, Sarah Gigante. A name we will hear a lot of for the next 10, 15 years. And she puts herself now in contention to be selected for the Tokyo Olympics, which are just 18 months away. She put her arm up before you can see that huge scar she's got on her right elbow. You said earlier she broke both her elbows earlier this year. Duncan, Incredible now, shots of her training with plasters on her arms gold, on the wind the trainer. Jersey, the jersey that she will wear for the next The all-important jersey. Months. You two have both experienced pulling As the jersey on. What's it like? It's really overwhelming. You feel like so relieved that you were able to bring all your training together to, to bring a victory like this. Of course, the gold pan, Samantha, I'll get you to... She wasn't going panning for gold today. Out. She was panning for green and gold, and she collected in a big way. And of course, it instantly well, becomes your favourite you item of clothing. Professor. She's got plenty of them in the junior category, but this one is a whole new level. Get the champagne on the stage. And, if you can all and she's only just the old enough for the champagne. 
Last year when she was winning the under-19s, they didn't have the champagne because they weren't legally entitled to drink. So impressive that we're able to maintain rule and regulations. It's time to take off those caps, ladies, yes. I think we would love to see the champagne popped. You deserve it. Check that bottle, that Ladies basket. and gentlemen, your top three. And, your and, and for all her brilliance on the bike, Sarah's got a little less experience with the champagne bottle and getting some advice from Sarah Roy. Maybe a little bit of difficulty on the first one, but I'm sure it's going to be the first of many. Uh, she'll get lots of practice. There she goes, and she gets Spratt and Roy for good measure. What a wonderful moment. Ladies, I don't want to come too close. It just smells a little bit, mainly of champagne. And David McKenzie was about to get what was left in that bottle poured over his head. Sarah Gigante, we've spoken about her for a number of years as one of the rising stars of Australian cycling. Today she arrived in a big, big way. The star has risen well and truly. We do say she's just 18 years of age. She's coming into her prime, a young athlete with so much power, but also so much confidence. The way she went away from two riders, 10 years her senior, way more experienced. There's, there's some stuff you can't teach. The instinct of going at that moment was a tiny gap through the corner. She had a little bit more momentum, and it was still a long way from the finish. Well, she talked at the end about how she didn't contemplate winning until she was actually crossing the line. So as you say, this was all instinct and behavior and experience of just looking around and thinking, I've got a gap, I'm gonna go. And when she spoke about riding this race in awe of riding with her idols, got the impression that she had an unfair advantage. She was riding on pure excitement. No pressure. I mean, there's some, there's a real privilege to that, and it won't ever happen again. I don't think that will bother her because she has dealt with pressure at a junior level. And Robbie, you spoke about don't worry about age, but experiences, and she's got lots of experiences, and this just adds to it. She also goes out the winner of the Langdon Building Intermediate Sprint Classification ahead of Sarah Roy and Ella Bloor. Those three were in the breakaway, and they picked up the intermediate sprints along the way. There was also the QOM, the Queen of the Mountains, which is the stages Queen of the Mountains and it was Michaela Parsons going out the convincing winner in that one she clearly targeted it yeah she was very active early all throughout the race in that breakaway taking the major points at the stages Queen of the Mountain so she takes that major prize Sarah Roy of course in the break and Shara, Shara Gillow real aggressor on the climb in the final stages of this race really happy for Minnie Parsons as a strong rider she makes a comeback into the National Road Series peloton and you note that there are no points allocated there, or not in the top three, for the winner. Sarah Gigante, she saved everything for the big prize, the gold medal. She didn't get distracted at that point. She just happened to be there going through the finish line for those intermediate sprints, but she didn't really take them on. Well, the crowd is anticipating the start of the elite men's race. That gets underway in a little over a half an hour. We'll be live with the coverage of the elite men's race from 2 p.m. and. This climb we've seen today that you get a gap like Sarah Gigante got, you get to the top with a little bit of breathing space, you can hold on to the finish. From the top of the climb, it's mostly downhill. You've got the technical section through Fed Uni. That's actually a help. It hinders any chase behind you. Mostly downhill to the finish. 50 seconds the gap in the end Nearly for Sarah Gigante. Incredible. And Jamie Gunning in eighth position, the second of the under 23 riders. We'll speak a lot of her in the next 10 plus years. And that's a really strong performance by Brody Chapman and by Roper and Gunning. They're, they're riders that have not won national titles before, but are really now putting their hands up to, to perform well, particularly in Tour Down Under and Kid Elevens Road Race coming up in January, February. And when you look at just a minute 10 between the top nine riders in this race, it really speaks volumes about the depth of women's cycling in Australia. We have such a load of talent and now spread across multiple World Tour teams. And this young lady here, I don't think it'll be long before we see her in the World Tour as well. I'm sure that there'll be plenty of big teams around the world taking note of this performance by Sarah Gigante. Not just that she won the Australian title, but the riders in second, third and fourth position are all amongst the top riders in the world. Significant. The men, they await the start. Sarah Gigante though, she is the hero of the day as the winner of the elite women's road race. Still plenty to come throughout the afternoon from Bunningong.